Welcome back to this week's episode of Startup Heroes. We are back with another local entrepreneur, business leader, person in Chattanooga, and his name is Isaiah. Isaiah, how are you? I'm doing well, guys. How are y'all? Good. Doing great. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for coming on, man. We're excited to have you. Excited to be here. Thanks yeah. for having me. <laughs> uh, so give us a real quick just uh, rundown of who you are and what you do. So as you already said, Isaiah Williams, um, I do business development for Omni Home Services and our subsidiary companies within local Chattanooga fan of all things coffee, which is really nice to be in the room with you guys. So yeah, there we go. That's awesome. So what are some brands that uh, that you want to tell us about that kind of is housed within Omni? For sure. So we have Chattanooga Home Inspector, uh, several time best of the best winning home inspection company. We have Elevate Home Staging and Design. The name kind of tells what they do. Nuclear Pest Control is a newer one within the ecosystem. Um, Colby Rakowski leads up the pest control team there. And we've got Yellow Door Property Management, a basically property management company that specializes in Airbnb and vacation rentals. And we also have a maintenance company, Triumph Properties, which just like the name Intellis performs general maintenance on a variety of different properties. So that's what it looks like right now. It's a very like home oriented, all within anything the within the home. Yeah, exactly. What was, what was the first one? Like what started all this? First one was Chattanooga Home Inspector. Okay. Um, the success that the team was able to have over there was so substantial. Um, we were, the guys were basically like, let's just continue building out the model from there. Um, I mean, of course, the reality is that road with Chai was paved by so many people before where we are now to um, get to that level of accomplishment that they've been able to experience. So yeah, that's kind of what it looks like over there. How long was it before? So when Turning Home Inspector started, mm -hmm. how long was it before the next kind of business subsidiary came about? So Triumph came just a couple of years later. Um, Elevate started after that, which was really a partnership between Malcolm Godwin and another local entrepreneur in the kind of real estate adjacent industry. So that I believe was 2019. Okay. Like to say. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah. What was like the inspiration for you to keep adding on these brands? Yeah, really good question. So at the end of the day, we just want to be a solution for people that have a problem that is home related, right? So the more that we can build out this network or this ecosystem to provide these solutions to homeowners that are in distress. Um, we also, since there are companies within the same organization, we're able to have a really close pulse with the team. And that means that we can provide team members that are going to provide the best level of service to the homeowner at that point. So really just building out this organization of quality individuals uh, to be able to provide a good service to the good people of Chattanooga has always been something that's been a top priority. So when did you join the Omni team? <laughs> Great question. So I am just a few days shy of two years, actually. Nice. Nice. Yep. Have you been the business development guy the whole time or did you start at something else? <sighs> Another good question. So That's I what I'm here for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I started in the hiring realm, actually. Um, Chattanooga Home Inspector was just looking for a few different roles that were they were having some trouble placing, brought me in. We got those filled fairly quickly. And from there, realized that business development was going to be in an essential quality that was, or not a quality, but an essential aspect of Chattanooga Home Inspector that was really needed to develop these relationships within the community, really, right? And realized that we have these great business partners and great customer base. How do we keep those expound on those relationships really kind of hone in and continue to develop those relationships but also look towards other people too right other people that we haven't worked with um what can we provide to those people to develop a new relationship with them from there how do you do that what, oh, are, what are some examples of maybe some like 
Isaiah top five highlight, you know, <laughs> ESPN 60 second reel. There we go. So really working with some of these real estate teams, uh, some of the larger teams in Chattanooga is so dependent on how they think that you're going to treat their client. Um, for a real estate agent, their client is like, it's like their love child, right? So they've got to have a lot of confidence in you in your team and in your company that not only you're going to perform a service, but when you're talking about a investment that usually is the largest investment that a person's going to make in their lifetime, they want to know that they're going to have genuine peace of mind behind that. And so really just um, emphasizing the value Helping that person, you know, come into our organization, meet our different inspectors, our different people on our leadership team, in our office, and have them gain that confidence that they're going to be receiving the best service based off of the people and the track record that we have. That's kind of the process that we try to take the, um, I say the general client, but that's really anyone, man, no matter how like higher level we want to call it. We want everyone to have that peace of mind. Sounds like you have two customers. You have mm -hmm. the people that actually get the inspections, but then also like the realtors yeah. and all that that are yeah. kind of referring people your way because if y'all do a bad job, then they look bad. And yes, and then, you know, so, <laughs> exactly. So there's like a, a heavier weight. It feels like to that. 100%. Does that affect how you guys interact? I mean, it probably shouldn't, but uh, you should kind of maybe no matter what, like premium. But I feel like that might make mm -hmm. things even more like. Yeah, I think Heavy. if we're being, that's that's a really good point. I think if we're being super candid about it, when we know that we're talking with an agent that does a lot of volume in our area, it can be, it can be an intimidating conversation at some point. It's so intimidating, yeah. Yeah, yeah I yeah. mean, like every business wants to perform well. And when they have these like, super pivotal times in the business that they know they're in front of someone that can be good for them in the long term it's like a make or break situation like how are we gonna how are we gonna handle this conversation are we gonna say the things that need to be said and yeah that can be intimidating sometime oh, man hear that so what makes you keep going why do you wake up in the morning keep doing this and uh just you know put on your pants the right way so i think the goals that we have for Omni as an organization in the future really drive <laughs> what I see us being able to accomplish down the road. It's really interesting. Nick Bear, he's the CEO of the supplement company out of Austin and like super good athlete. And he has this saying that consistently good beats occasionally great every single time. And so I wake up every morning and I'm like, how can we be 1% better as a team, as a company, as an organization? And even me, like, how can I be 1% better as a person to be able to facilitate someone else's growth? Which really leads me into the second part of the answer I would give on that, which is I care about the people within our organization so much, man. Um, when we look at Decisions that we make as a business, it's not like, okay, this is going to drive X, Y, and Z. Profitability is going to raise by this percent. Like, that's important, right? But I think also, too, okay, what's going to be good for Dustin and his family? We know that Sean has younger kids. What's, what is this decision going to mean in the impact of his life? his family's well-being and that's that's what it means to me like making decisions driving performance that's really going to be something that's meaningful for them on the other side of that decision do you think that uh focus on your people actually makes it produces better results than if you just focused on the bottom line 100 percent. yeah i mean it's like like in daily society right if you're a good person and just regular dealings or even if you want to put like the business application on it usually man that has a way of coming back to be good for you in the long run 
Um, it's crazy the amount of ways that we end up seeing that, but I have no doubt that from a, like personnel or even just we can take profitability into perspective here. When we work with partners that see how much we care about the people that are on our team, they think about that and they know like, for example, great leader at Chai, our guy that heads up everything, Drew Bain. Our partners know that Drew cares about everyone on that team. We have like, we have this running thing at Chai. You can say anything about Drew that you want to, but you always have to acknowledge that nobody cares more about Chai and the mission there than Drew does. So do I think that it makes a difference? Um, yeah, hugely impactful. <laughs> I love it. Right, Nate, superpowers. <clears throat> Yeah, so with so many brands under it, Omni really sounds like it's like a powerhouse. That sounds like it can be really <laughs> difficult to keep all of that running, especially since I, it sounds like you have like a fairly small, tight knit team. But what do you think are like some of like the superpowers that you and your team have that's allowing you to keep this going? I mean, that kind of goes back a little bit to what we were just talking about, really like a focus on people, right? Like if we know that at Elevate, for example, that let's take Mackenzie, that she really cares about all the stagers and the movers there. They are going to do better for that reason, right? The people know the people that work there, they know that when they come in, it's not just a job, but they're they're contributing to each other's livelihoods and that they're really helping their other team members out. So we all have that focus on each other wanting to see each and every one of our people do well in their lives. And I can say genuinely that we always look to facilitate that growth no matter what it is, mm. right? So really just a quick example. Good example is Colby. Uh, Colby Rakowski, who used to be an inspector at Chai. I mean, one day it was just obvious that it wasn't really what he was looking to do anymore. And to be completely candid, it wasn't super soon after he, or like super far after he started at Chai, that this became a revelation. But Malcolm and myself and Colby himself, like we looked at the situation and the reality was Colby is such a good individual, such a hard worker that how do you not help this guy create another opportunity for himself? And now he's running the pest control company, which he's like almost single handedly responsible for really make hap making happen from an operational perspective. So yeah, we see where people want to go and we just do everything that we can to help them get to that point. I got to jump in on that. Um, I super <laughs> resonate with that. Uh, so is it kind of like chai is the, the mainstay and it supports these other businesses as they get off their feet and then yes. hopefully businesses yeah. start, you know, finding their own meals one day and uh, very, yeah, that's a really, um, that's a good point. So chai is the largest from like both a personnel and revenue perspective at this point. And so it does operate as a feeder company, both to newer companies but also to omni as the parent company even at this point and so while we're working on these larger concepts and working on bringing more companies into the ecosystem chai has a huge role in making that happen that's awesome it's it's uh both scary but it also exciting to bet the success of one business on the potential success of another <laughs> uh, we, we we do that some with decaffeinated and yeah. uh it's some some days it's like man this is really cool and other days it's like ah, yeah are, are we being smart here but uh <laughs> i think it's all about the people and like finding the right people and throwing resources at them that and i think that's that's what really will separate the good from the i bad. mean you made a good point before you even started this like you know you've got these gentlemen that are in these super integral positions within um be caffeinated hive whatever it might be and like the risk is there for them but also the risk is there for you too right so 
what does it mean to everyone? Is it worth it? Is it worth like jumping out there trying to make it happen if it's going to have a positive impact on somebody's life? Even just saying that, it seems like <laughs> it seems like the answer is there. So that's really cool to see on y'all's end too. So would you say that the level of care that you guys show is something that really like sets you apart from similar businesses? Hmm. I would say yes. Um, in our respective industry with home inspecting in particular, a hundred percent. I mean, we have one, the largest team in the Chattanooga area. And so we focus on doing everything that we can to show people that we care about them. Another example, actually, now that I think about it is with triumph, the maintenance company, we, are working currently to provide some more opportunities to firefighters because the scheduling so happily ends up working out really well with the schedule that firefighters work and going on an Omni. And we have this gentleman there now and every so now and then it's not super conducive from a scheduling point with him. And if you were at a larger company, would that work? If that's like the case day in and day out, probably not. Right. But we recognize the talent and the, the opportunity that this individual possesses. And so we're like, for the time being, we're going to do whatever it takes to keep him within the organization because we value people over positions. Mm -hmm. Right. So we really look to make work what we can and just try to keep good people around us because ultimately man like any organization good people are going to be what make it for you we've talked about this a lot on some of our past episodes but um everything you're saying is like yes 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 yes, yes. <laughs> preach it preach it from the rooftops but we talk about a lot of businesses try to build up as quickly as possible mm -hmm. and it, it works really well for a while and then they get a little too tall and they kind of like start tipping over. Yeah. And there's businesses that build out first and then they start building up. And it sounds like you guys are kind of doing both at the same time, but you're really focusing on building that foundation of really strong people and prioritizing them. And then like you're giving opportunities to these people that is ha happens to be also building it up. Do you yeah, agree? A hundred percent. And to go back and kind of more pinpointedly answer your question as far as how it sets us apart in the industry. I think it's really a domino effect if we're being honest about it. If your employees, if your personnel, they can see that you have this significant level of care and interest in them, they can feel that. And they also know if it's superficial too, right? If it's like something that's being said and not really acted upon. But when it is acted upon, the domino effect there is that if you know that your company cares about you, you know that your job is valued, how can that not come across to your customer when you're dealing with them on the day in and day out? Like, you know that you're valued. It makes you care more about what you're doing. And so in turn, you are being the best that you can on every interaction that you can be. You know, like we all have off days, but as a general... Yes, that care dominoes to the customer, to the client, whatever that might be, and that's always a good outcome. I call it the upside down trickle method. Look at that. And it's like <laughs> normally it's the pyramid is owners on top and then, you know, whatever's left over gets put on to the next one, which is like the employees and then blah blah blah. But we, you know, focus on employees first and then they make the customers happy and then they make the business happy and then that makes the owners happy or the leaders or whatever. So that rolls into exactly the point yeah. that I was thinking of. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, the reality is, and I'll take Chai for an example, just because it's the easiest one here. As much as our leadership team does everything that they can to refine operations, make things better, the level of experience that we experience, and I realized this a couple of days ago because we just got through winning another best of the best award in that, that category, it does not happen without the guys that are willing to do the work day in and day out. Like, 
VP, head of business development, head of marketing, whatever you want to be, none of that exists if the guys are not making it happen. It's like a wheel that you might be able to spin on a little bit faster if you have these leadership abilities and, you know, kind of these positions that are making some of the higher level stuff happen. But the will as a whole doesn't even exist without the guys that are willing to do the hard work day in and day out. And so those are the gentlemen, the ladies that deserve all the praise, if we're being honest about it. And so I can never, I can never go past that point without trying to highlight that at least a little bit. You ever heard of um, rock stars versus superstars? I've not. So it's one of my favorite concepts and it really made me understand how different some people value things over others. And what's, what I really like about the concept is you're not just one or the other, your whole life. It's kind of like based on um, what's going on in your life at the moment or like what season you're in. But rock stars are people that, want to be really, really good at what they're good at and just show up and do that and then go home and like, mm. they're good. So they, they show up to work, they do their job really well and they get their sense of like value and accomplishment from doing that job really well. Then you have superstars who are also really good at the job, but they get value from rising through the ranks and from getting better and like going on to the next thing. Um, and without both, you're kind of screwed. If you all have all superstars, like you said, there's no wheel to spin. If you have all rock stars, then it kind of like the wheel is too unwieldy and starts like wobbling around and it's like, oh, I have too many spokes on this wheel. <laughs> um, so it's like important to have a balance of both. And personally, I think I'm a like quote superstar. And that's why most of my job respons- responsibilities that have to do with rock star stuff is hard for me because I'm like, I don't want to show up every day and like do the paperwork and do the payroll. Like that's not what makes mm-hmm. me happy. I want to like, okay, what's the next location? What's the next product we can come out? Like what's the next thing that makes us better? But without doing both, it's really bad. Um, but I was, I couldn't understand why some people wanted to be like the rock star mentality. And then I was like, Oh wait, that's, there's just a whole different like mentality. And the, like I said, seasons of life. So if you have a newborn child, you're not looking to be a superstar. You're looking to go to work, do a good job, get paid for it, and then yeah. go home and be with your family. But like, if you're an empty nester, you've been, you know, a rock star for 18 years. You're like, no, I'd like to maybe like change things up a little bit and try and do something else. Or you're right out of college, you start as a superstar, then you're like, okay, I'm kind of good. I just want to be a rock star now. I mean, so as like a leader and manager, kind of identifying both of those, I mean, like, what do you actually want out of this job? And being okay with that changing sometimes because like people are people they're not gonna be the same for 50 years and then die (laughs) or 80 or 100 or whatever um and that's why it's important to keep checking in and stuff but um kind of what you were saying like there's these the people that do all the work in both sides and they both need to be recognized for what they're doing and what they're good at but it's so different but both so important and without a balance of either one your business just kind of goes that's such a good point man. yeah it's I fun that. it's I'm, fun i'm gonna hold hold on to that <laughs> <laughs> well awesome so speaking of like dominoes before i think a big trend i'm seeing too with how omni operates is you guys you get them in with your great service and then you have so many other like great businesses that you can then like funnel people towards is that like kind of like the operating idea is like you get people in to prove your value and then they just keep using you guys for all these different services and stuff like that a hundred percent I mean, that's the thought of having so many of these companies that are really super adjacent to each other is that, I mean, from like a operational perspective, yes, the marketing is super clear how that works. The lead generation is also really straightforward. But when we're talking about like being front facing to the consumer, We also want people to know that you've had a good experience with Elevate. You've had a good experience with Nuclear. Let's keep it going, right? Like we're gonna refer you to another company that's within our organization. And we hope that whoever that person is, it makes them feel more comfortable for that reason, right? It's like they see a familiar face because it's all part of the same ecosystem at the end of the day. So that's kind of the logic behind that. 
That's fantastic. Well, cool. Yeah. It sounds like uh, it's a very powerful company that's doing awesome stuff. And uh, it's cool to hear about all your strengths. But I think, Chris, you're going to hem now with some of those weaknesses. <laughs> man, this is what beats you up. <laughs> what is it, man? What What is your evil green diamond that makes you weak in the knees and want to run away? I know. And the crazy thing is it's so easy to identify <laughs> this, too. <laughs> Mine is, too. Don't worry. I already yeah. talked about it. It's paperwork. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So for me, I would just say focus as like a general. And it's the... It's like, it's the catch 22 of being involved in a pretty fair amount of different things at any given time. It's exciting because you've got so many things to work on, so many different ways to really keep the ball rolling and push the respective company forward. But at the same time, focusing on one specific thing kills me. It is so difficult to do. Um, I'm sure that we'll get in a second on how I'm trying to make this make this happen. But yeah, really just focusing on one thing, being present with that, um, I'm noticing is just, it's really important, right? Because how well are you going to be able to sort one matter if you've got seven different ones in the back of your mind and they're really pulling at you so yeah just a um ability to really dial in and focus is something that's it's a difficulty yeah i have the same one uh it's it's like really bad if you don't have a boss and that's your weakness too like i don't have anyone that holds me accountable which is terrible um until it's usually the irs or the (laughs) the gas company that holds me accountable and like talk talk and I'm like oh uh yeah no i feel that so what do you do to face that like what is your uh when you're feeling like no i don't need to give into my kryptonite today how do you fight that yeah so i think if you don't keep yourself on a kind of time managed schedule then there really is no way to be like all right i'm going to pay attention to this until it no longer feels like I need to pay attention to that. That just doesn't work for me. So I say, I'm gonna block off 30 minutes for this, an hour for this, rank in order of priority, right? Like what needs to be settled uh, in list of, list of like, like priority, there we go. That's what I was looking for. And you basically just sort your time where it needs to go. And from there, I've got like, th- man, it's it's wild. Have you guys ever seen like a chess tournament before? Yes. And mm-hmm. the like clock that they have and you like you push one side down and then it's the other person's turn. I have that clock and I look at like from a time. <laughs> Michael's That's awesome. laughing at me. <laughs> I look from a time block perspective. I'm like, okay, it's been 30 minutes. Even though I might want to keep rolling on this, this is what we set out. I mean, it's time to move to the other thing and self-discipline as oddly as it is, like really plays a factor into that. You might think that, you know, you're a hard worker and so you can really just drive yourself to do whatever it is, no matter how long it takes. That's just not reasonable thinking. There's only so much of you. And when you realize that as a human, like you're going to run out of mental stamina at one point, you have to make the best use of the energy that you have. And so that's where we look once again at that time blocking factor from there. I like, this is going to get kind of nerdy, but I like to think of it like in a video game, you have your mana bar, like your MP. Yeah. You have like, you have a certain amount per day and some actions require a lot and some require less, but like no matter what combination you do, you still only have twelve mana. You know, <laughs> that was such a good example. Bro. Thank you. <laughs> Nerds unite. That's perfect. Um, so Michael one time showed me this l- list of stuff when I um, had a hard time. I kept getting calls from different utility companies saying like, "Hey, why aren't you paying this?" And it's like, because there's a lot. But I wrote down <laughs> how many different utility bills I was paying between our businesses and like personal, and it was over thirty. Um, maybe around 40 and each one, you know, has its own login and stuff. So Michael and I one time just went out to stone cup 
And I just sat upstairs for two hours and I just put everything on auto pay and did all this stuff. Uh, but he shared with me this list. So first it's the, like the task efficiency list. I don't know if that's actually what it's called, but that's what I'm going to call it. So step one is what can I eliminate? So you make your list of everything that you have and that you need to do. And you say, what can I get rid of that? I don't have to do. That's not important. Maybe it's urgent, but it doesn't matter. So I don't need to do it. Mm -hmm. Then simplify. Um, what is what is yours? This list is different. Yeah. <laughs> I I pulled it up on Google, but this isn't yeah, yeah. the same. It says simplify the automation. Yeah, they're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what's up? Um, so the list goes like this: eliminate first. So if there's something you can eliminate, the, that's amazing. And if it's something recurring that you do all the time. Just imagine how much time you saved. You cut off this thing you do three hours every week. You saved yourself three hours every week forever. That's amazing. That feels really good. Next one is automate. So anything that you can automate so you never have to touch it again, or you only have to touch it if it gets broken and then you have to fix it, that's, again, saving you time for infinity. It's amazing. Next one is delegation, which almost feels like automation, but you still have to kind of go through a period of time to hand it off to other people so that they actually feel confident and you are feel confident that they're going to do a great job next one is uh optimize so if you can't kill it you can't automate it can't give it away how can you template it as much as possible so that every single time you sit down to do it it's easier to do and then last but not least nike just do it <laughs> yeah oh Hi. man that was good and that's been your weekly mic drop <laughs> from mike himself i i love that michael yeah it's it's very useful i know like chris has used that kind of like mentality and then um when i was in college uh, i believe i got this from the book um 12 habits of highly effective people mm. which is the idea of when you look at tasks that you can kind of put most of your task into like if you were to make like a a grid with like four quadrants where like on one side on like the um the x like Oh no, what's going the, the on like Y axis. Yes, thank you. On like the X and Y axis where like on the X it's um things that are urgent, on the Y it's things that are important. And a lot of times people can get so hung up on things that are urgent but not important. So i I use that a lot with B caffeine since I have to juggle a lot of things and with I think too is kinda like asking myself things like um a good example is like emails. But a lot of times you get like an email from someone and it can feel like I have to stop what I'm doing right now. I need to respond to this right now. And that's because emails and things like that can feel very urgent, you know, because this person's trying to communicate with me. So I need to like be time, uh, timely and to make sure I'm being punctual and respond to them soon. But a lot of times, though, that stuff's not important right now, you know. So uh, a big thing that um, I learned from that is like, you know, focus on the important and urgent stuff first, obviously, because it's important. It's happening right now. Um, then you go to the important and not urgent stuff because that's where people mess up a lot of times is where they have like that big thing where it's like, you know, we have this big event coming up. We have this big new product launch, but it's two months away. You know, we'll get to it later. <laughs> and then later just keeps on coming and it's coming. And then it's like the day before, you know, you've, you've probably experienced that in like high school with like, you know, not staying for the test and stuff like that. But yeah, time management is so important. That's that's yeah. It's <laughs> awesome. Mm -hmm. To tie that off, I saw a video of this guy the other day too that was talking about being like a business leader, a business owner. And um, basically he said there's kind of three categories of things. There's like the 20% of stuff that's like, I'm going to butcher this. Basically there's 80% <laughs> of things that don't matter and you should get your people to do it so that you can focus on the 20% that's like expanding the business like tremendously. Oh, there was like 20% that's your normal stuff, 60% that's like um, like th like new business, but like moderate new business. And then there's the 20% that's like, oh my gosh, if we got this new business, it would completely change the business. And he was like, the 20% is what your normal employees should be doing. That's just like the normal stuff. The 60% is what your like top lead team or your um, admins or whatever they should be focusing on and leading. And then the top 20% of if I got this, it would drastically change is what you should be working on. And I mm -hmm. thought that was a really interesting way to, to look at it. Cause like, um, yeah, that, that is what owners and leaders should kind of be focusing on. Cause if you get one of those, like that's huge. But if you're focused on the not important, urgent things, then you're just doing that, you know, all 100%. the time. <laughs> all right. So where do you think you can improve the most? 
Isaiah, specifically you? <laughs> so, I mean, with the, I mean, we'll roll past time management for right now. I think one of the things that we have worked really hard at improving over the past year and continue to do so is the hiring process or bringing new people into the organization, really no matter what position, we don't want to get too into the weeds on that, but we're usually looking for certain mindsets, but without fail, the most important thing is someone's attitude as far as the work that they're doing, the team that they're doing it with, and we always really like to see where do they align value-wise with our organization. And so when we talk about getting better to really refine that, um, I think that that comes from the from within the organization, having better processes to define what that definitively looks like, right? And how we can be consistent and really intentional on everyone that we bring in, no matter how, like, what the level of importance might look like on the outside looking end of the job, that everyone keeps the same brand and the same pattern of really just being people that we're super to have super happy to have within our organization we always say we can teach anyone to be a good barista but we can't teach them to be a good person right um and so yeah that's we hire for the same thing we don't care if you've ever done a coffee job before in fact a lot of times we prefer there to be zero coffee experience because then we don't have to retrain Mm -hmm. it's easier to train than retrain um but we're looking for that. Uh, my favorite answer when someone, I ask them like, why are you interviewing at Becaffeinated is when they say something like, I came through the drive through I had this amazing experience, your baristas made me feel like I mattered, and even though it was a drive through I felt like it was a really impactful situation, or they gave me coffee when I was crying and it made my day, and that, and I wanna do that for other people, and that's usually like, not always, but it's it's really, really strong marks. Yeah. Like brownie points out the wazoo. <laughs> I'm like, all right, that's what I want. And it was really cool because like two years into it, we started getting those answers. And I was like, this feels really good. And now whenever we do batch interviews um, and we hire like, you know, five or 10 people at a time, that is kind of more common than uncommon now is people with that sentiment. And now I'll get we leave kind of a rolling application now, even when we're not hiring just so that we have them to call on when we do need to hire. And that's pretty common now is they'll send an email. It's like, I love be caffeinated. I love like how they make people feel, I love what you're doing in the community. And I want to be a part of that. And that's the people that usually do really well and stick around for a while. Yeah. That's, that's the values. All right. Last question in the kryptonite territory <laughs> with what you know now, what decision would you or your team have made differently with your business or Omni in general, or it could be a specific subsect of Omni. So man, that's such a good one. I would go back to the hiring process, but be a little bit more specific as far as what example we're looking at. The reality is that with any business, you're probably, especially if you're a startup, as you continue to evolve, Positions start to look different, right? And we've noticed specifically with a few different departments, whether it be marketing or operations, that they can look significantly different in a fairly short amount of time, which I just did not know, if I'm being completely honest. I didn't know the, like, the degree to which that can be the case. And... If I had, I would say going back, I would have really looked more as far as outlining realistic expectations for these people. And I think when you hire for one expectation and you really heavily lean into that person having maybe a really specific skill set for that job, it gets really difficult if you start to realize that you need to go outside that realm and that maybe this job starts to look completely different. Maybe it's titled the same, but what's going to help them succeed becomes a different story entirely. And so, I mean, the reality is that in the past, we have 
a couple of times just not made the best decision on that. And as sad as it is to me, that's the reality. That's the hurdle that as a small business, as a startup, you kind of have to hit at some points through the life cycle of the business to understand how do we get better from here? How do we create the best opportunities for people from here, for this position, for this department? And so we take those learning experiences and we make the company better for it. Yeah, that's was, that was good. That's deep. I uh, have a lot of instances I can point to in my like personal life of things that I would never wish on anyone. Mm. And I wish it hadn't happened to me, but also I'm really glad it did because it made me a much better person or changed my own like perspective on values or money. Um, and yeah, I think it's just as important in businesses. And when I listen to podcasts like um, uh, How I Built This with Guy Raz and stuff like oh, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, it makes me feel so much better when I hear people like, you know, the Starbucks guy or Virgin Mobile guy that are like, yeah, I wasn't sure if I was going to make it like <laughs> for seven years straight, but then we did I'm like, okay. Yeah. It wasn't, it's not just me. <laughs> it's not just us. It's like the most successful entrepreneurs in the world and the most successful businesses in the world also had that, like, are we good moment? <laughs> and they weren't, but then they were. Yeah. And you just, you know, that, that makes me feel good. Awesome. Um, but they wouldn't have gotten to where they were without those Rocky montage moments of like, that's the reality, you know? man. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely is like a reality. I think of like small businesses that a lot of times like people are going to end up juggling a lot of hats, a lot of positions. And that's where like, I think it's really valuable, like obviously to have like talented people in like those fields, but also like people who are just good at like being able to switch those hats and be like reactive, you know, and go like, okay, you know, there's a fire. The gophers. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. There's a fire in front of me. I got to put it out, you know, even if that's not, you know, on a piece of paper saying that's what my job here is. But yeah, so moving out of your kryptonite though. So Isaiah, where do you think things are going? What's like the next big plan for Omni? The next big plan for Omni. Oh man, this just gets me so excited. I almost start shaking. <laughs> <laughs> the next big plan is to make Omni a subscription service at one point. And so we start uh, really infusing the technology side to make Omni a subscription service, but also have a larger software base to where we essentially become a one-stop shop for anyone that has any problem with their home. And I'll be honest with you, I don't Man, this doesn't really sound good when I say it out loud. I'm not a huge fan of talking to people on the phone for extensive amount of, amounts of time. And when I say a huge fan, I mean, I don't like doing it at all. So <laughs> <laughs> if I do have the option to do or do need a task via an app or over the web, oh my gosh, I'm going to do that every single time. And so we want to give that option to people that are either my like, wife's the same way there she, we go see she won't call people on the phone <laughs> <laughs> she just won't that's so reassuring to hear that <laughs> um so we want to give people options right some people are huge fans of talking on the phone for endless amount of amounts of time and so we're going to have client success managers for them but for those folks that are not in that realm we're going to have the kind of like online software experience to where if you have a leak from your roof, you snap a picture, send it into our kind of like team structure from there, and we either come in, take care of that ourselves, or we would use a partner to help us out with that. Kind of the partner structure is where we take a lot of time to vet a business, and this is actually a thing with Omni already. We have um, preferred partners that we work with. We take a lot of time to vet this business, um, spend time with the owners to see if they align with us from a value standpoint because at the end of the day like we're putting our stamp on this right and so we you know spend that time interview those people and have them come on as partners of ours to be able to take care of and fill in the gaps that we cannot right so that's kind of what that looks like i hope that was a that was a pretty wraparound answer it, it kind of reminds me of when you live in an apartment complex 
and you have like like a roof leak and you put in a um what do you call that like a maintenance request mm -hmm. but like not in an apartment that's pretty cool and also instead of it taking like yeah. a month to be fixed <laughs> you do it. a month for someone to come look at it <laughs> and then another yeah. month before it's not fixed correctly <laughs> exactly. i mean usually we would try to do same day overnight whatever it takes man yeah. we want to provide peace of mind that's what we always tell people and if that means that you've got a emergency that comes up at the wee hours of the night i mean is it maybe going to cost you a little bit to get that taken care of for sure but we want people to be assured that we're going to take care of anything that they need and put our name behind it put the value behind it so that's uh that's part of the ultimate goal for omni that's awesome mm -hmm. i'm stoked that's huge. for that is there a timeline on that or so yes i mean yes and no we're actually in the beta phase right now with omni on that Heck yeah. and so we're seeing what it looks like what problems that we're continually running into um what <laughs> what times we're experiencing the most volume in and trying to readjust fire from that so i would say as far as the software portion that's more tbd but as far as us being able to make it out to people with emergency situations or homes of preferred customers of ours, we're looking within a year to really be able to close in on that goal. Mm. That's amazing. So where can folks go to learn more about that? So they can go to omnihs.com and that'll tell us, tell them more about what we have going on at Omni, but also a really fair amount about our subsidiary companies and what goes on within their respective realms as well. Fantastic. And so, Isaiah, is there anything else that you just want to say before we uh, go into our rapid fire time? Yeah, I would say one last thing about Omni is probably the part that hits closest to my heart with Omni. So, I've grown up in Chattanooga, lived in Chattanooga for all my life, and love the city, love the people, man. One very unfortunate um, problem that's it's not a new problem it's just maybe more brought to the forefront now is that struggles with housing continue to um, really permeate right and it's not just Chattanooga but here we are so that's where we're talking about um, we want Omni to not only be a resource that can and I know that we've t talked about this before I love using this term democratize home ownership for people by making it more accessible and the barrier to entry at least from like a service need um, more feasible for people over time you know with any technology or really any good company you try to refine and make it better and better and easier more easily accessible for people so we have that side but also too we want to work with partners in the community to help educate people on what home ownership looks like and how it be can become a reality for those that might not think it is right and i'll be honest with you like you're not going to hear me say man renting is terrible i'm not going to be that person because there's a lot of people that it makes a lot of sense for and for some people home ownership makes sense for them so we want to provide these resources for one you to help to help you understand what makes the best sense for you and we're not trying to be the governing body or authority on this and so we're going to be working with different realtors and different agencies to help see what that can actually look like in the future but really giving back to the community man is the part that i'm most excited about we talked about earlier that with a business profitability and numbers can't be the only thing that matter right the mission has to be forefront and has to be something that's accepted from not only the people within your organization but your customer base as well and i think that that's something that really resonates with a lot of people in chattanooga right now that was epic uh <laughs> just into there no uh what y'all have a podcast yeah correct what's it called it's called square one how do you find it square one it can be accessed on spotify apple google podcasts it's all over our all social over. where you listen to yourself 
<laughs> so what do y'all yeah. talk about on that? So, man, we interview business owners locally here and just talk to them about their process of being where they are now at this point, right? It's really geared towards having actionable advice for entrepreneurs that are looking to get started and whatever it might be, or just an informative podcast, really. But we always encourage the guests to go back to square one, right? Like when they were getting started, what piece of advice would they give their younger selves to overcome the obstacles that they already have, but in a, you know, like easier manner? Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, y'all should go listen to it. I think I'm going to be on it soon, right? Absolutely. That's what we're talking about? Yeah. 100%. <laughs> um, and that wasn't me forcing him into it. We've already talked about we, it. Just to clarify. <laughs> <laughs> we have wanted Chris to come on since the beginning. We're going to make it happen. Uh, yeah. All right. We're going to end with our rapid fire Jeez. questions. I'm going to do the first half. Nate's going to do the second. What was or what is your favorite book, both business and non-business? Oh, yeah. Good stuff. Zero to One is the business one by Peter Thiel. And the non-business would have to be The, the Alchemist by hmm. Paulo Coelho. Nice. I love it. Cool. Who was your biggest influence growing up and why? I would say, really, you could take almost any family member of mine and make a pretty good case. But if we're going to say for business, the influence regarding that, it'd have to be really either one of my grandfathers. Um, the... And stealing in me of work ethic was so, it was there, you know, like from being a child and no matter what that meant, whether it was like mixing concrete for our restaurant floor or it was laying floor with my granddad at a um, respective property, that was, uh, that was hard work that made me better for it now. I love it. My, my grandparents are huge in mine story as well. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Uh, what's your favorite restaurant in Chattanooga? Oh my goodness. There's so many great ones to choose from. I feel like they just keep popping up too. There's been so many that have opened in the last couple months. They're just so good. I agree, but I'm going to go with one that has been here for quite a while, which is Tremont Tavern. There you go. I have never been disappointed in my life. <laughs> <laughs> it's my dad's favorite place. That's he loves awesome. It. Yeah. There we go. Uh, what's your go-to coffee drink? Man, we just got it. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> Half sweet ice mocha with 2% milk. Bam. That's it. <laughs> Except you got it hot today, I think. This is true. This is true. And then my last one, who's your favorite superhero? Iron Man. Iron Man. Clears. We Clears. won't debate if he's a superhero or not. Oh, but. man. Breaking my heart. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Goodness. Okay. Uh, what is your favorite song? All right. So it was really difficult for me to I, just like pinpoint one at any time in my life. So I'm going to say... If I had to have one walkout song, <laughs> Kickstart My Heart by Motley Crue. I listen to it mm -hmm. most mornings, and it helps me get the energy that I desperately need every morning. We might change our question in the future to what would your walkout song be. That's yeah, pretty epic. That's I awesome. like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, then pedaling off of that, what is your favorite band? I'm about to give a resoundingly different answer. Um, <laughs> So coming back from Indonesia, like dance and like electric music, electronic music has been like just permeating within me for some reason. And I've really been enjoying SG Lewis a lot here recently. So I'd have to say that for like right now. Gotcha. If you could meet anyone alive today, who would it be? Such a good question. Lewis Hamilton or Leo Messi. He's like my childhood hero, man. So really, either of those guys would be good. Mm. What is your favorite thing to make? Spaghetti. It's the only thing I know how to make. <laughs> yes. It's the only thing I know how to make. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> meatballs or no meatballs? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> okay, and final one. Harry Potter, Star Wars, or Lord of the Rings? What's the best? Star Wars. <laughs> I didn't expect that. Okay. I think that's objectively the right answer, though. Oh, man. That's I don't know. Lord of the Rings. It? It's just not Harry Potter. Oh, man. That's mm -hmm. fair. Harry Potter is the least of the... It's great, Absolutely. but... Okay, I have, I have a question I want to add on to this. That's a two-part question. That's real. What is your why, and what is Omni's why? Like, Simon Sinek-oriented why. 
My why is because I want to... Man, this is really funny. I was talking to Malcolm about this. Like, my grandfather's generation grew up with companies that were formed out of necessity. And my generation gets to have a little bit more fun, <laughs> but also um, really want to be part of something that has purpose and meaning and strikes a chord with them personally. And um, I mean, I volunteered at the community kitchen in Chattanooga for most of my childhood. Um, got to see a lot of people that housing kind of passed up for one reason or another, right? And just wanted to, um, you know, like I'm not going to act like there's one solution for homelessness in Chattanooga or that one person can solve it. Um, it's a collective effort by far, but I want it to be part of at least something that would be a resource for the community and would be able to help people and to establish a fun team around us while doing that. That was kind of my why for this. That's awesome. And Omni's why? Omni's why, in my humble opinion, is because people need Omni, at least conceptually, I think more than is realized. So not um, specifically Omni, but just the, like what Omni does, people right. need. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it's like, you know, the reality of it, man, is when I talk with like some of the people that I graduated with, some of the companies within the ecosystem might not be quote unquote, super sexy to be into, but oh my God, are they needed? Mm. Like people need these services and even more so they need to be able to rely on the fact that they're going to be done right, done with care and done by trustworthy people the first time. The whole dirty jobs thing. Exactly. Like, That's yeah. why Omni exists, to yeah. provide all of those under one umbrella. No one wants to clean out a septic tank, but right. it needs to be cleaned out. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. Well, that'll be the episode of Startup Heroes today. Thanks for listening. For those of you that are listening, uh, make sure you follow us on Instagram, Spotify, whatever you want to do or look at us at. Um, make sure you follow Isaiah and the team. Uh, where can they find you on Instagram and stuff like that? Uh, yeah, they can find me at, on Instagram at s.i.williams and LinkedIn, Isaiah Williams. And then our team, they can find at Chattanooga Home Inspector on Instagram and Nuclear Pest Control, pretty much any of the <laughs> subsidiary names. Love it. Uh, thanks for listening. Come tune in with us next week. This was Chris Wood. Nate Tucker. And our guest. Isaiah Williams. Have a good day and make sure that you make someone happy today. <laughs>